But my last point is the not only the profitability and sustainability. The organization must be whether they are going to face the vagaries or the uncertainties or the challenges in trying to go on and what are the they are planning to sustain uh, the organization. So to me, uh, profit is alone cannot be talked about unless it is uh, thought that how it is going, uh, how organization is going to sustain its position and profitability. In this case, I like to add that uh, there was a Kodak company, most of uh, the new old generation people have developed with the Kodak film and Kodak camera. That once upon a time, that used to be Fortune 4, Fortune 500 company with 40 years position. Now Kodak is no oil in the sea. Uh, in the previous seasons, Xerox uh, was being talked about that. We all, all, all knew that it is not a photocopy to go and have a Xerox. Xerox could not maintain their religious system. So to me, not profit alone, it is sustainable. Sustainability is also an important ingredient. Entrepreneur and management team must be profit. Thank you. Hello. Uh, you've already heard from big business and uh, big governance. The rest of the people on the panel are comparatively smaller businesses and we have nearly no governance. That's how the business is running. So I'm going to take this opportunity and uh, we will, one by one, all of us are trying to become entrepreneurs. Some are senior entrepreneurs like Rachet Her, others are first generation. So Rachet has a BMW parked outside. I don't. It's still in the showroom. I'll get it one day. So I'm going to, we're going to talk about a little about what our journey has been and what our learning. How many of you students say want to become entrepreneurs? How many of you are passionate? Not just passionate, you don't have to be entrepreneurs. We need to talk to you guys afterwards, okay? First thing is passion. Most of us finish our graduation, our master's degree and we get a job, okay? That is why if you look at it from a relationship perspective, that's like uh, getting married and then finding love. <laughs> right? Entrepreneurs first find love and if it works out, they decide to get married. Uh, personally, I run Lorato, so, I, so I, I got married right out of college to a job in the software business. And I spent some time, 14 years, till the relationship was not working so well. So I took a divorce and I found love again. So, all of you have tried it So, people at the front, entrepreneur has nothing to do by age. You guys are young. The world is giving all of us a chance that my life is a good thing was to get an H1B visa and go to the US. And that was the only option for software guys or marketing guys. So, today we're going to just talk about three things. Passion comes from within. Passion is not sitting on a stage. Passion is trying to do something. But in entrepreneurship, passion is not about just personal. It is, it, are you passionate about something in terms of solving a problem which needs solving? Let's say you are very passionate about bouncing a ball on your knee. You can't get the startup on that, you know, I'm so good. You have to find something, a problem which is large enough which can be solved through your passion. And passion is not about dedication. Passion will make you want to build the product which is wonderful. Passion will make you want to make the inclusive product to help others. Passion will try to make it make you more competitive if there are other people outside. In the words of Larry Wall, he's the father of Perl, a programming language, and all of the examples, examples for programmers. The three greatest virtues of a programmer, and I would say also of an entrepreneur, are laziness, impatience, and hubris. Hubris being an ego so big, so big that even God wants to strike it down. And these are virtues. Laziness makes you hate doing things again and again, the boring, the repetitive, the cumbersome, you want to automate things. Impatience, you are in a hurry, you want to do it now, you want it to be faster, better, bigger, more. And hubris, and most important, you want to be proud of what you built. Even if others believe in you or not, today or tomorrow they will, but you must believe in what you are doing every day. So I'm part of Dorado, we are a legal tech platform which is solving problems for B2C clients, so if anybody has any legal advice, property, documentation, uh, criminal complaints, divorce, 
We provide support across the country. We have 3,500 lawyers. The reason I am passionate about this business, uh, two reasons. I have had a close brush with the law. A couple of cases against me, I filed a couple. I realize how difficult it can be. But more than that, uh, I've already worked it for 15 years. I believe, I hope, we are at least helping a few people out there. We're not an NGO, but at least our work is helping people get justice. So I'm going to ask other colleagues on the panel, uh, what do they think, what is passion, and how can passion drive the product and the service to build it into a brand? That's it. Thank you, and very, very well put. Uh, I think uh, passion, so like the three P's of uh, startup world, passion, people, and data. So you have to know how the three are going to go and fall into a place. But yeah, passion is, uh, you know, what keeps you going, if not really what keeps, what gets you started. Because uh, startup world typically is a double cycle. So the moment you are starting up, you are up there. You are very, very high on energy. You are going to think, I'm going to do something crazy. You know, I'm going to revolutionize the world. Then comes a downfall, you know, where customers are not coming to you. You're running after the uh, investor. They're not coming to you. You're losing speed. You're losing hair. You're gaining weight. And then again, the curve starts, the upside swing. But that is the passion which keeps you going. So if you're not passionate enough, you won't be able to complete that particular cycle. So I think starting up, uh, you know, there, there has to be, obviously, there has to be tremendous passion to start up because you're sacrificing a lot of things and you're entering into a sort of uncharted waters. But what's also what's very, very important is your skill set. That if I'm getting into a business, do I know how to run this show? Or am I dependent on 10 other people to do the thing? So if I'm getting into a tech business, uh, for example, if I'm developing Google, am I the primary owner? Can I run this show if these 10 people leave? Yes or no? If the answer is no, step out. Because people come, people go. If so, and then your passion will obviously stay there. But if you are very, very, uh, if your skill sets are right, then along with passion, you would drive the business to greater heights, and up. and then the money and people and everything will follow. So I think that's why passion is uh, equally important as a skill set. So, uh, so as Rajit says, passion, the core dream of that startup or that business must be driven by the entrepreneur himself or herself and find the right people around you to support. They will share your dream, but you must be driving the bus. Precisely, yeah. Okay, Sanjula, uh, uh, her passion is to help people save money. And everybody's passion is to save money. So Sanjula, what do you think? What makes a startup? What, how can passion help a startup? See? Okay, first of all, hi everybody. This is Sanjula Miglani. And uh, before starting this panel discussion from my end, I'd like to mention a point. I am highly impressed by the way you put everything together. I mean, I couldn't have done it better. And people usually tell me that I'm good at it. So I'm going to appreciate that first. Now, answering the question about passion, what exactly is passion? Absolutely agreed with the point that, you know, uh, just by bouncing the ball, you can't be passionate. Yes, you're passionate about it, but you can't start something up with just that. The problem statement should be so encouraging for you that you need to solve this. And that is what absolute passion is. So I remember I was in school in grade 12 and I used to do a lot of modern United Nations. A lot of students here would be aware of what it is. So I used to go to these sessions and I used to debate for the love of debating and all of it. And one fine day, a colleague was sitting and he just asked me, Is the talent there? What do you get out of it? And I'm like, Pasha, I'm just passionate about debating. He says, Is that it? Or is it about what you're debating about? And that got me thinking that day, that yes, it's actually about that. It's about how I want to help people. And that's when I co-founded my own NGO about six years ago, and it's now actually funded by the United Nations. And I'm very proud to say that the problem statement was so big that I actually wanted to answer it. And that's what makes an absolute entrepreneur. Yes, you, leave, you lose sleep. Yes you get gray hair and believe me, it's bad for a girl. But you know what, you're so passionate about and in that direction that no matter what, I want to achieve this. And absolutely rightly put again by Rajit, you know what, you need to be perfect, actually not perfect, but excellent at what you're passionate about. Either that or start learning it. Because people come, people go, but your business needs to run. And for that, you need to know it in so according to me, passion is not just a word, it's about I, improvement and innovation. That is passion for me. And I think it should be the uh, Vaibhav, you, you are in a high
highly competitive market where most people would believe it's not a good idea to fight. Chances of success are low, but you already made a success in the mobile ecosystem. So share our experience. Can passion help you take on the big ones? Passion is helping us, I say. Uh, we started, uh, I have been into the mobile hands industry for the last 17 years, worked with all handset manufacturing companies as CEOs and other uh, high profile positions there. So when I got to introduce, got, got an interruption with the founders of our company and they were young IITians from Bombay. They were working on a project on language. So we had a lot of discussions and everything and the passion was there in them and it also gave me passion to understand because I knew the market in India from the handset industry side and understood the problems faced by the consumers, what they were facing at the smartphone increase, increase uh, the smartphone business increasing, people going for smartphones. So the B and C and D category towns where the main business people are expecting right now, they didn't understand the language. So our product is uh, first, we are the world's first regional operating system. We are fighting with Google, iOS or Microsoft Windows. And right now in India, we are the second largest OS company after Google. So we, are, we have already overtaken iOS and Windows. So we are at around 7.9% of share in India. So which is a very big thing in last one and a half years when we launched and when we started reaching the second largest brand, like the second largest OS in India. This is all due to our passion and our effort, what we did for the consumer. And because we understood the first, understood the uh, problem statement, what was required from the consumer. And we developed a product which was solving the problems of the consumer. So that hit us, that gave us a good strength and a strength in the market for us to right now to be second, the number second partner in the in India. So according to our passion, if you're competing in a dominated category, it's not about copying, it's about finding what trick they're missing, what the customers really need, and build your background on that. So on that note, I'm gonna invite Amar. Amandeep. Amandeep is a similar business, uh, he's not fighting organized sector, he's trying to create a sector which is totally unorganized and I hope you've taken a ride in his, his wheels are better than a BMW, so what he's providing to people. So Amandeep's going to tell about how he's trying to create something in an unorganized sector with passion. Yeah, hi Nigel. Uh, first of all, hi everyone, my name is Amandeep and I'm from J.S. Pokemon, founder of CEO. I'd like to thank Nikhil for setting things in momentum and energizing such a beautiful conversation over here. Uh, well, if I talk about passion, you know, the worst thing with human race is that we believe in a rat race. We believe that if we should just follow the person who's moving ahead of us, he's following another person ahead of us, and everyone is walking in a line towards a dead end. If you ask the first person as to where he was heading, he'll say, I was going home, and people just started following him. So that's where passion steps in. Today, a lot many people want to get into the startup industry. They believe that this is a very in thing. They believe that this is something you know that very catch is very catchy. But let me tell you that it's about passion and a lot of hard work. If you believe in something, if you truly believe that you have a solution to a particular a particular problem that is there in the society, and you really want to get into that problem, that is where you should really get into the startup world or the industry and establish a company of your own. As far as my story is concerned, when I was in IT Delhi. And uh, at that time, I was working under Professor Sudipto Mukherjee, who was the head of mechanical design and manufacturing. I had an interview with him for about 14, 45 minutes, with his back facing towards me. And I was trying to convince him. He did not see me. He did not ask me what my name was. I entered his office. I was just trying to convince him that I want to work upon this project that was on vehicle simulators, and I'm very keen towards it. For 45 minutes, he had his back towards me, and I was just blindly convincing him. When I actually convinced him, he looked towards me and he said, you're working on the project. So let's have a walk to my lab. In those five minutes from his office to the lab, he convinced me that if you want to make something out of yourself, look for problems around you. Look for problems and then find solutions in the form of technology. And this is market that technology, build a brand out of that technology. And that is what we are doing today at JS Company. We believe that last mile connectivity, the unemployment, the rising pollution levels, they are a major problem to our society. 
and with the commercial electric vehicles that we are manufacturing and designing, we believe that we can solve all these problems in a longer run. So thanks a little again, Nikhil, for uh, asking my opinion on the same. And I'll just pass on the email to you. So, but, sir, uh, what it comes out, passion is about finding a problem which is big enough to solve and which needs solving. The problem with that is when you, and let's talk about investors, it's a dirty word, but you need money, right? When you have a great problem, you found a great problem, you say I will solve it, they will say who died and made you the expert. It's a good problem, it is worth solving, but why you? You can say I have some technology skills, they will say you don't have money, you have to say I have the right team, they will say you don't have the tech or you don't have the marketing expertise. So no man is an island, no matter how smart you are as an entrepreneur, it's a team game, but you have to find your own team. Because when initially you will raise money or you will attract customers or whatever, they are buying into the people, which is your small team, before they actually buy into the company brand, which will take many years to build. When we started Lorado, and I joined up with a colleague who was a lawyer, and uh, he was a lawyer, so I never talked to a client in Lorado. I'm not a lawyer, I'm a nice guy. Uh, others are all lawyers in our company. They talked to the clients. But I, what I did was, for eight months I ran, I rode in the Uber every day. And every day, twice a day, for eight months, I talked to the taxi drivers. Because, of, because the model was similar. I wanted to realize what the lawyers, what are the trigger points which they like about in such a marketplace. So I talked to the drivers about money, about business, about Ola and competition. Because we were going into a space where we didn't know people. Another small example, I wanted to hire a tech, and uh, it's good, there are not many tech. Tech are very boring people, okay? They don't have much social life. So I, we, we, I, I knew a lot of techs from my background. I didn't want any of them around. So I, one guy applied, a young man. I asked him, what have you done? He said, when a startup could be fail. I I asked him, we work on this particular technology, X, Y, Z. Do you know how to do it? I pretty much gave him the job. Years back, I went for a job interview with a large multinational. It was a great job. Uh, they asked me one question. I was a tech at that time. They said, Nikhil, tell us something. What is more important, attitude or technology? I'm ashamed to say that at that time, I answered technology. So you have to find like-minded people, of course, with the skills. And you share your passion, not just your dream. Many people in the initial phase will come looking for building their own startup or other things, but you need to find the right partners, whether it's suppliers, lawyers, employees. So quickly, let's take a view of everybody else. Uh, Raj, you already built and sold one. So let's talk about the one where you already made the money. How did you find your team and why do you think it was a great team which was where the others wanted to acquire?